doesn't matter who you are, what you do, or what kind of dog you have. Flyball is the sport for you. Welcome back, everyone. It's Alex for another Flyball and Friends interview. Today, we're talking to someone from the UK once again. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, welcome, Lisa. I'm so glad that you could take time out of your day to be here with me. I'm super excited to get to talk to another person from Scotland. So if you could introduce yourself for everyone today. Hi, um, my name's Lisa Bradley. <laughs> um, I'm from a small town outside of Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, and I am the co-captain with my mum of the Flying Scots team. So we're based kind of central belt. There's not really many other teams near us. Um, so I think we are kind of the only one done this way. Um, I have nine dogs, uh, two of which are retired. One is an ornament in the house. <laughs> um, two are in training and four are currently racing as well. Um, I've been doing flyball for about 13, 12, 13 years. Um, and job wise, I am currently unemployed due to just graduating last year um, from musical theatre. So uh, I obviously can't audition much right now. So <laughs> kind of just floating. <laughs> Fair enough. So now starting flyball at such a young age, what got you playing flyball? Uh, so me and my mum wanted to do something with our oldest colleague who's just turned 14. Um, and we heard about agility. So we wanted to do it Agility with her, they, she was a collie, so we kind of just automatically thought that that was going to be the best thing for her. Um, and my mum, <laughs> so my mum um, started doing agility with her, and I was just kind of tagging along, like still in high school, so didn't really know what else to do. Um, and then once we were training smudge um, we couldn't get her to run ahead of my mum um, and just the whole like kind of running away from my mum she wasn't really she was she was kind of like knotted to my mum from the word go uh, so we tried fly ball we, we were suggested to try fly ball to get smudge to run out ahead of my mum and then come back and as soon as we tried fly ball we were kind of like that was us much easier sport for, for well we thought so at the time <laughs> it was a much easier sport uh, and we just kind of stuck, so that was that, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So, did you starting Flyball off in a younger age help you with your musical theatre aspect of everything in life? Um, I don't really know. I, I don't know because I, I didn't really... Um, I always loved musical theatre, but I didn't kind of ever have the confidence to do it until I'd studied about two other subjects at college, so... Um, I, I, I did always love it, so it was kind of always there. Um, but I think because we started Flyball with just like a team that only trained for crafts, it was kind of, it was all older women. They weren't old, but they were older women. They were like my mum's age. So um, I wasn't really used to being around people my own age in the sport. So I kind of, I probably got a little more confident that way, kind of being more mature, but I don't know, it was kind of, an odd experience, I suppose, at that age, <laughs> without enough. having their kids around. So yeah, for sure. So now, is there something that you would recommend to someone starting out in flyball? Um, probably just to kind of have fun with it. Um, first and foremost, like that is always what we kind of support is that people just have fun and want to get a greater connection with their dogs and um, just spend more time with their dog, kind of getting to know each other as a dog partner, kind of partnership um, and definitely don't underestimate a good recall <laughs> that is the one thing that we're always like work on the recall like if you don't work on anything else that like getting that focus is really really important because as soon as the dog doesn't pay attention to you it's so hard to work even in a like a, an individual kind of setting it's really hard to work so that's the kind of thing I definitely say don't underestimate the recall. <laughs> All right, now is there a most memorable dog that you've gotten to watch Racy in Flatball? Um, so probably I had to think about this earlier. I couldn't actually think, but the one dog that kind of stood out um, from years ago, like uh, he def I know he definitely doesn't run anymore, was Strider. Um, it's Catherine Ridley's. Um, I can't even remember what mix he is, but he's a big lurcher 
Um, he's beautiful, he's an absolutely stunning dog. Um, and I know a lot of people have got pups from him and they're just, they're great dogs. Um, but he was always one that kind of stuck out in my mind, seeing like running at the champs and he was like the fastest dog in Britain for a long time. Like he was running three sevens and all that before I even knew a sub four dog existed. <laughs> so um, he was kind of one and then other two more recently um, was Fusion, which is Katie Wardle's dog. Um, she's from Salt Tires. Um, and then Ice, who is Nicole Fisher's. Um, I just I just love the two dogs. I, I don't really know why, but I just love watching them. So those kind of stick out. <laughs> That's cool. That's good that you like watching dogs, right? It, it makes the sport that much more enjoyable. <laughs> so how often does your team practice? Uh, we are currently just once a week on a Sunday. Um, it's kind of always been a Sunday for us ever since we started. Um, it just seems to work out the best yeah. for getting the hall and people being free and stuff. That's cool. So how many tournaments would you say are around in your area? Um, there's not much in our like close area. We kind of have to travel roughly an hour a little bit more over an hour for a competition and it's mostly us that host um, the indoor UKFL shows in Scotland. Um, the other teams just haven't gotten found a venue that's quite right for them yet so um, we do host the majority in Scotland. Um, apart from that it's probably about three hours maybe when we go across the border to England. Fair enough. Now what would be the furthest you've been for flyball? was um, 11 hours down to Ipswich um, for the Euros in 2016 and uh, that was a very long journey for us. That was probably the furthest our team has gone. So Fair enough. It's long. <laughs> Did you guys take a camper or a trailer or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we took a caravan. So we were um, happily in a caravan. I was so glad we had a caravan by that point because <laughs> we were tenting it a lot um, in the first few years of us doing flyball. So thankful for the caravan. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, do you have a favorite tournament that you like to go to besides any of the championship stuff? Um, so I probably would say either Oswestry, which is just outside of Wales, um, or Anglesey, which is kind of at the very top of Wales. Um, I've only been to Anglesey once, and that was last April. Um, but it was just such a great venue. Like everybody in the UK always raves about the competitions there. Um, and I was, I can understand why, because the venue's great. Um, but Oswestry is probably the one we go to most often mm. um, compared to like our one. So I would definitely say there. The Fair racing's enough. just great. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, now what would be one of the more important things you also learned at, when you first started playing fly ball? That, so I think one of the main things is that like your partnership with your dog is so important. Like you get the the best out of your dog if you have a good relationship with it. Yeah. Um, and I found that that's like worked no matter, like, what age your dog is. What like if because I've there's obviously like some people that come to fly ball and they're like, oh, I want to bring my auntie's dog, and we're like, like you have to have a good relationship with that dog if you're gonna be training it because yeah. it doesn't make sense to just bring it along when it's never been on a walk with you. So that's kind of always been. Um, the main thing I've realized is really important is having a good connection with the dog for sure. you want to train. Yeah, the training seems to go a little bit smoother when you have that good bond with them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Much smoother. <laughs> All right, so what exactly do you like about playing fly ball? Um, mostly I'm sure that everybody says um, the social aspect is great because you kind of get friends up and down the country. You can rely on a lot of people that you like if you were stuck somewhere, you could get help or something like that. Um, I love as well, um, I'm very competitive, <laughs> as I'm sure many fly bowlers are, um, but I'm I'm very, very competitive. So I love the sense of like accomplishing something that you've worked really hard for. Yeah. So like whether it's a time, whether it's a dog just running clean um, or something like that, and just like the opportunity to kind of make something happen. Mm -hmm. I really like, I enjoy that part of it. <laughs> That's cool. So is there a team or a person that you would suggest a new person to go and talk to or watch play fly ball? Um, if it was them obviously joining like my team, 
it would be like me or my mum because we're the main trainers. But um, out with the team, um, if there was somebody to suggest in the ring as a like really strong unit, I would suggest Tails We Win. Um, purely because they are like like a well-oiled machine. They are so on top of it. Like once, as soon as that whistle goes and their timer starts, they are in, everybody's in place. Like they've all got their jobs and it's like, I've worked with them and they've asked me to do a job on their team. And I'm honestly like, I can't believe how on top of it they are. They're so easy to watch because they're so smooth. Um, and for sheer love of the sport, um, Eclipse, are just, they're a, a team down south as well. They're just so much fun to watch and fun to race as well. Cause they're just, they absolutely love the sport and they just enjoy it. And they're just, they're just a great team to watch as well. That's awesome. Now, <laughs> is there a team or maybe a person that you haven't been able to watch yet that you would still like to? Um, I think, I think I've covered all my bases in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it would probably just be um, American American or Canadian teams because I've never seen any of them race apart from like on YouTube or something. So uh, I would love to actually experience in that firsthand as well. So I don't I don't really know any specific teams, but I just would love to see because I know that their speeds are just incredible over there. So <laughs> it'd be good to see them. <laughs> All right, now do you have an early memory of Flyball that you could share with us? Oh, so <laughs> um, what the, like my very kind of very early, and I'm talking like when we first started Flyball. Um, we, our oldest Collie wouldn't really, she was never interested in a tennis ball. We just had like the issue where she was just so tuggy obsessed that she would not play with anything. She would play with like cuddly toys and stuff like that. <laughs> so we actually had to stuff a tuggy into the box for her to even go near the box. <laughs> so that was pretty much like all she would collect from the box for ages until we eventually kind of tied a ball to a bit of rope so it looked like a tuggy and then worked back from there but that's probably one of my earliest memories just stuffing a tuggy into a box <laughs> so that she could just go up to it. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay now do you have another favourite memory of Flyball that it's, whether it's on or off the racing lanes? Probably um, so one of the, my favourites in terms of like accomplishments was uh, my, one of my colleagues is quite reactive and quite just not very keen on much. <laughs> he's very like, he just, he's very scared of the world. So um, seeing him like confidently run up, he still spits his ball, he's seven years old. He probably will never actually complete a run, um, but he's run against other dogs. And I think that's probably been my biggest worry and my biggest accomplishment and it's just it was amazing seeing him run and come back for his tuggy and not even glance um it's just it's taken me so long to like be able to trust him to even like get him where he is now so i think that's probably one of my favorite favorite memories <laughs> that's a good one to listen to that's cool now yep. do you have any <laughs> other personal goals playing fly ball um Probably to get our youngest girl out, um, our youngest collie, she was kind of meant to debut in kind of April, May. Um, I'd love to see her go because she has some speed behind her. She's just she's just a lovely little dog to kind of watch and train. Um, and my, so my personal goal would be to get her out and confident and running. Uh, apart from that, I'd just love to like be able to hit 15 seconds. I think I would be, I'd be sold. <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> I'd be happy. Um, Apart from that, that's probably, yeah, the that's two mains. Cool. Okay, now do you have anyone that you look up to as, as a, maybe a mentor in Flyball, whether it was when you were first starting out or continuing to this day? Um, I don't, like, I don't really know. I, I had a really long, hard think about this. Um, and I probably, like, I would have just said to my mum because my mum's just stuck out for so long and she's, like, been so open-minded to learning everything. Like, we started way back when we didn't even know the BFA was a thing. So we we were like, we literally just training for Crufts. So we trained all year for one event. Um, and we've kind of just developed, we've gone to seminars and we've gone to different workshops and everything. And we've had like trainers come into the team and stuff and help us. Um, but mainly just like my mum's just a great person. So I just, I just look up to her in every aspect, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> All right, well, I think the only thing I have left is do you do anything outside of playing fly ball? 
Um, so I am a musical theatre graduate, so okay. I do love singing and dancing and performing and stuff. Um, so that is my main my main focus. Um, but outside of that, I love going to the gym. But obviously they're closed right now, which is really sucks a lot. <laughs> um, and I'm currently been doing. Um, I've been painting a lot as well. Again, I studied art like years ago, um, and I've been painting again. So I've been like designing crate tags for dog owners and stuff. So that's kind of been my main my main thing just now. But that's pretty much it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, if you shoot me a link, we'll definitely put that in the description below that everyone can check out and maybe get some crate tags. For oh. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, I like singing and dancing too, but I'm sure that you're a lot better than I am at that. <laughs> I've had a lot of training. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's all I have, Lisa. The only thing I have left, really, is if you could challenge someone to do an interview with me. Do you have anyone in mind? Uh, so I had two people in mind. Um, Vicky Daw, who is with Storm Chasers, and she's also a board member for uh, UKFL as well. Um, and Rachel Caldwell, she's our junior liaison officer, and she's also a fellow Scot, so it'd be good to get um, another Scot on to do some <laughs> to do some interview with you. So that'd be good. That's awesome. Well, I'm super excited to get to get in touch with them and hopefully get them on the channel as well. But other than that, Lisa, that's all I have. And thank you again so much for sharing your stories and your experiences. And it was great catching up with you and getting to meet you for the first time. And hopefully I know, I know. <laughs> racing lanes real soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks again, Lisa. It was great getting to meet you and listen to all your stories and experiences. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, or if you just haven't hit that subscribe button, make sure you consider doing so. I know there's lots of you out there still that are not subscribed, and I would love if you could. If you guys would hit that notification bell just to get notified when any new video drops so you don't miss a thing. If you guys would like some more information on Lisa's team or Flyball in general, you can check out the links in the description below. Anything else that we talked about that we would love to throw links down there, they will be down there, and you guys can check them out. If you guys would like to check out my merchandise page, I got a link down there that you guys could check out that I have tons of shirts, sweaters, and anything, and it delivers worldwide, you guys could have. Thanks again for joining me today, and hopefully we'll see each other real soon. Until next time, guys, see you then.